the commencement of the military parade marking the 90th anniversary of the founding of the Chinese People's Liberation Army. Now all rise, raise the national flag, and play the national anthem. Parade guards are now taking their positions. There are 40 of them and they will mark the line for the parade. As we have mentioned, 12,000 soldiers, more than 100 aircraft and 500 pieces of equipment have been lining up at Zurichur base for the military parade to celebrate the 90th anniversary of the PLA's founding. And 40% of those armaments have never been seen by the public ever before. In just a moment, the Commander-in-Chief will begin the inspection at Zurichur. Han Wei Guo, the head of the Central Theater Command and commander of the military parade. Today's troops all come from combat forces. It's a showcase of ordinary servicemen and servicewomen.
At the head of the line is the flag guard formation, which will be the first to be revealed.
进步了。Undergoing profound reforms, championed by Xi Jinping, the People's Armed Force must uphold the central authority, maintain the absolute leadership of the party, and obey the orders given by the party central committee, the Central Military Commission, and President Xi Jinping. Military forces must be able to win wars and protect the country's core interests: regional stability and world peace. Servicemen and women must also uphold the fine traditions that have been passed down over the past 90 years. As reforms roll on, two new forces have been established: the Rocket Force and Strategic Support Force. In addition to the Army, Navy, and Air Force. The PLA's chain of command has always been reconstructed to improve efficiency and information sharing. The four general headquarters have been divided into 15 functional departments under the Central Military Commission, and the seven previous military regions were replaced by five theater commands. Each of them focuses on combat and is responsible to cope with security threats within their scopes.
While the troops have been chanting, follow the party's leadership, be able to win wars and uphold fine traditions. As part of the reforms, 300,000 soldiers will be demobilized. The decision was first announced by President Xi Jinping in 2015 when China marked the 70th anniversary of its victory in the war of resistance against Japanese aggression. And outdated armaments will be phased out and new weapons will be deployed. The reform also stressed a law-based approach in administration as a safeguard. China's military understands that advanced information technology has changed modern warfare significantly. The idea is to strike the, hot, the enemy and remain unhurt or even undetected. The way that the parade is organized is in line with the notion that a theater command focuses on combat. The parade is taking place in the central theater command, as the commander serves as the general director, with almost all branches of forces under his command. And unlike before, the forces and equipment displayed are combat ready as the parade takes place. And the parade is taking place in the field. The Duruha Base covers an area of more than 1,000 square kilometers. It is the largest military training base in Asia, similar to the U.S. Fort Berwyn National Training Center in California. It is mainly used for tactics training. And since 2000, the base has hosted a number of large-scale drills. These include the Peace Mission 2014, a joint anti-terrorism exercise that involved more than 7,000 military personnel from five member countries with the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. In 2014, the PLA set up its first professional Blue Army Brigade at Zhuruhu. The brigade was equipped with the most advanced weapons and trained in unscripted drills. In the stride 2014, Zhuruhu drill later that year, the Blue Army shocked the country by defeating six out of seven Red Army Brigades. The seven brigades were the best troops selected from the then seven military area commands. The Blue Army victories triggered a reform in training, and since then, the Blue Army has continued to serve as a top opponent for many visiting troops training at Zhuruhu.
You're now watching CGTN's special coverage of the military parade to celebrate the 90th anniversary of the People's Liberation Army's founding. 12,000 service personnel are awaiting Xi Jinping's inspection for more than 129 aircraft, 571 pieces of ground equipment. And they will appear in 36 different formations both on the ground and in the air. The parade itself is viewed as a test of the POA's coordination capabilities. Almost all the branches involved and under the command of General Han Weiguo, the head of the Central Military Command. It is also a test of how different battle groups can be formed effectively instead of formations but the supply of they are combat ready groups. It also shows the PLA's ability to support large numbers of service personnel and its ability to maintain and operate in multiple pieces of equipment. Zhuruhe Base has a variety of terrains including grassland, desert, hills and ravines. The diversity makes Zhuruhe an ideal place for training. For the most part of the year, the region is exposed to strong sunshine, gales, and sandstorms. The climate poses a tough test for those undergoing. Unlike the military parade held in Beijing in 2015, why is this year's event being held in the field instead of a display of armaments as a demonstration of combat capacity? Its success relies on strong logistics support and effective commanding system. In China's military reform emphasizes the training and drills should follow the needs of real wars. Before the reform, China's military exercises were conducted according to arrangements, but now visiting troops at Zhuruhe never know what to expect. To defeat the Blue Army, they have to improvise and give full play to what they have learned. The Communist Party of China led the Nanchan Uprising nine decades ago. The event marked the founding of the CPC's armed forces. And after that, the armed forces had survived harsh conditions in fighting and thrived. In the 1930s, the soldiers overcame exceedingly adverse natural environments during the Long March expedition. And later, they crushed Japan's fantasy of colonizing the entire China during World War II. From 1946 to 1949, they fought and defeated the Kuomintang regime, which eventually led to the founding of the People's Republic. And in the 1950s, the armed forces took part in the Korean War to protect the Yang PRC against possible aggression by the U.S. The PLA, under the leadership of CPC, also made remarkable contributions to the country's social and economic development. Since the 18th National Congress of CPC, under the leadership of President Xi, China has been pushing ahead its deepening reform in a bid to make the Chinese dream a reality. Put forward. By President Xi in 2012, the Chinese dream aims to build a moderately prosperous society and realize China's national rejuvenation. And in this process, the CPC has been promoting the rule of law in the country, strengthening party discipline, and addressing people's concerns. The efforts have helped run and turn the page to a new chapter in the governance of China. And the strong army is the backbone of a strong country as military strength is needed to safeguard national security. Against the backdrop of a complicated external environment, the CPC Central Committee, the Central Military Commission and President Xi himself are leading the PLA to become a world-class force. To achieve this goal, the PLA has initiated reform, given greater emphasis to science and technology, strengthened disciplines, and improved its training and combat preparations. Now 
All the troops have already lined up for the military parade, which will begin very soon. Next up, formations and echelons will be showcased. You're now watching CGTN special coverage of the military parade to celebrate the 90th anniversary of the PLA's founding. Altogether, 12,000 service personnel are gathering at Zhu Rihe. They are waiting for its Commander-in-Chief, President Xi Jinping's inspection. And also, more than 120 aircraft and 571 pieces of equipment will be on display at the military parade. The soldiers and personnel will appear in 36 formations, both on the ground and in the air. And for those of you who just joined us, you're watching a special coverage of the military parade. This is, of course, to mark the 90th anniversary of the founding of the PLA. And also happening a little later, the president and also the chairman of the Central Military Commission is expected to deliver a keynote speech marking this occasion. And we on CGTN have a team of reporters covering this from all the possible angles in a way that no one else can. And we'll also have all the important analysis putting these facts into perspective for you. So we have everything laid out for you straight ahead right here on CGTN. We're now awaiting the military parade to start any moment from now. As we spoke earlier, the formations and echelons will be showcased. The Flat Guard Formation leads the parade. More than 200 officers and soldiers are escorted, escorting the flags of the CPC, the People's Republic of China, and the PLA. The formation reminds us the PLA remains loyal to the party and committed to defending the country and serving the people. And under these flags, the CPC, the Chinese people, and the People's Armed Forces fought together to gain independence, found a new republic, and also achieve remarkable social and economic development.
Overhead are two groups of helicopters. 17 aircraft from the first group formed the Chinese characters Ba Yi, August the 1st, the date of PLA's founding 90 years ago. Since 1927, the PLA has fought countless battles under the leadership of the Communist Party of China. Ba Yi is printed on both the flag and badge of the PLA. It is regarded as a symbol of honor. And the second group of 24 helicopters formed the number 90, representing the 90-year history of the PLA. The PLA has grown from a ground force of infantry into a modernized force with various branches and different services. Besides the flag guard formation in this echelon of helicopters, 34 other formations and echelons will also pass the viewing stand. They include combat formations from non-battle groups. These groups represent land combat, information combat, special operations, air defense, anti-missile, naval combat, air combat, comprehensive support, anti-terrorism, and strategic assault. In addition, more than 8,000 service personnel from 10 formations are taking part. Here comes the Air Commando Echelon, the first from the Land Combat Group. Now, 10 armed helicopters from the Vanguard, they can be used to destroy enemy helicopters, tanks, armored vehicles, and bunks. Another eight armed helicopters are escorting 18 transport helicopters that can carry two companies of soldiers. The Echelon can be used either for reconnaissance or as a strike force. It marks the PLA's development into a multidimensional force. It also gives us a glimpse of the new emphasis on mobility in both offense and defense. As the inauguration of the Army General Command in 2015, Xi Jinping said China must build a new army, which is capable of launching both offense and defense from the air. And commandos are now coming out of the helicopters and gathering in tactical formations. Armed helicopters are hovering to provide air support. Transport helicopters come to bring reinforcement and supply and take the wounded away. Here comes the ground formations.
Leading the tank formation, Major General Yao Wang. There are 22 99A tanks, the latest generation of main battlefield tanks that are entirely developed by China. The tanks can hit targets accurately while on the move and have been upgraded for war in the information age. Major General Zhao Yu is leading the Infantry Fighting Vehicle, or IFV, formation. The 18 vehicles include the 04A tracked IBFV and 08 wheeled IFV. The vehicles show the PLA's Army's evolution into a mechanized and digitalized force. Self-propelled gun formation is headed by Major General Liu Lin. We see three new types of the armored vehicles. They can fire like artilleries and move like tanks. Radars enables them to rally in a short time and can shower the enemy with heavy shells and rockets. Major General Wang Taoyi is heading the formation of Red Arrow 10 anti-tank missiles. The newly commissioned weapon can be used on targets like tanks, armored vehicles, and helicopters. It also has superb tracking capability. Here comes the Information Combat Group, led by Major General Li Zhongli. Information support troops are deployed to find and locate enemy targets. It is also meant to guide fire support groups to destroy those targets. They are one of the determining factors in modern warfare. Major General Yi Jianshu is leading the Electronic Reconnaissance Formation. Electronic Reconnaissance armaments are the eyes and ears of an army, and they enabled an army to get an upper hand in battles. Major General Wu Yafei is heading the electronic countermeasure formation. The electronic countermeasures disrupts or cripples enemy information systems with electromagnetic spectrum or radiation. Major General Mao Mingrong is leading the drone formation. It includes drones for communication jamming, radar jamming, and counter radiation. One thing that makes them particularly effective is that they are difficult to detect.
And as the tank formation has concluded its march past, the troops are making a U-turn towards the rally area in front of the viewing stand. Now comes the Special Operations Group, Major General Zhang Jingdong and nearly 250 personnel in 32 airplane vehicles. Special Forces are the elite of the elites and must survive rigorous selection and training processes. They are known for the use of unconventional tactics and techniques. Special forces need the support of special equipment. While Major General Wai Min is leading the special equipment formation, there are 22 wheeled light reconnaissance vehicles and armed assault vehicles. They are just a hint of the arsenal of the special forces. And these are the Air Defense and Anton Missile Combat Group. Major General Meng Xianjiang is leading this early warning radar formation. This is the first one in this group. Major General Liu Mingbao is heading the service-to-air missile formation, and we are seeing HQ-9B and HQ-22 missiles. They make a powerful defense when combined together. Major General Dong Yujiang is leading the air defense artillery and missile formation. Now we are seeing 09 self prepared anti aircraft guns, HQ 6 missile launchers, and track anti aircraft guns. With anti aircraft guns and missiles, the formation can defend against targets from both short and long distances. Up next is the Naval Battle Group. Major General Kong Jun is leading the Marine Corps formation. The amphibious forces take the lead in operations such as landing and seizure of islands. Major General Wei Wenhui is leading the first formation of naval missiles. Weapons displayed here include the HHQ-9B ship-to-air and YJ-12A ship-to-ship missiles. And these can intercept warplanes, missiles, and ships. And here's the second formation of naval missiles, headed by Major Liu Zizhu. We're looking at the YJ-83K air-to-ship missiles and YJ-62A short-to-ship missiles. Oh, 
Overhead now is the air battle group. Major General Xiao Weiyan leads the echelon of the airborne early warning and control with AEWC aircraft. Under the escort of eight J-10B fighter jets, but there is the KJ-2000 AEWC aircraft. They are followed by KJ-500 type and the YA jammers. Early warning aircraft can simultaneously track multiple airborne targets and instantly work out which is the biggest threat before transmitting data to its own forces. Attacks then can be launched beyond the visual range. This is the fleet of H-6K bombers. They are a new type of median long-range strategic bombers that China has independently developed. An H-6K can travel thousands of kilometers and strike an enemy with precision-guided bombs or air-to-service missiles. It can also carry out long-range attacks with cruise missiles beyond the enemy's defense areas. This is the echelon of the military transport planes. There are one Y-20 and two Y-9 airfares. The Y-20 is a large sized transport plane. It was commissioned only last year. Ideal for long distance delivery of heavy cargo as well as military personnel. echelon is now in sight. It consists of the HY-6 refueling tanker and J-10C fighters. The tankers are mobile gas stations that can keep warplanes operational in prolonged air battles. We're looking at the carrier-based J-15 fighter jets. They are domestically designed and operate on China's first aircraft carrier, the Liaoning. J-15 fighters made their debut in 2015 military parade. And China marked the 70th anniversary of its victory in the war of resistance against Japanese aggression. The fighter jets in the lead as the J-20, China's fourth generation supersonic stealth fighter. The domestically built aircraft can fly low, elude radar detection and launch surprise attacks. Behind are the J-16 and J-11B stealth fighters. They have superior performance in electronic warfare. The J-16 is making its public debut. Now 
the J-11 bees are releasing infrared flares used to foil radar detection. Airborne troops is headed by Major General Sun Xiang Dong. They use airborne fighting vehicles and assault vehicles. After landing, paratroopers can turn into light armored assault force. Next up is the Comprehensive Support Group. Major General Yang Yi is leading the communication support formation, which includes tropical scatter communication vehicles and satellite communication vehicles. Tropical scatter communication is a method of communicating with microwave signals over considerable distance. Major General Li Zhizhong is leading the Engineering and Chemical Defense Units. There are integrated mine-sweeping vehicles, armored engineering vehicles that remove blockages, and wheeled assault bridges to provide deployable bridges. There are also spraying vehicles for chemical and nuclear threats. This is logistics support. Major General In Zhihong is leading the formation of off-road ambulances, water and oil tankers, and food processing vehicles. They provide what soldiers and their vehicles need to carry on. Major General Fu Hua is leading the equipment support team. They have tank recovery tractors as well as armored recovery and repair vehicles. Each one is a mobile repair workshop on the battlefield. Now the counter-terrorism group, one formation led by Major General Xu Ping, and that is the formation of armed police and special forces. They are members of the Falcon Commandos and elite counter-terror police brigade. Next is Strategic Assault Group in five formations. Coming first is the Rocket Force, led by Major General Wu Zhobao. The Rocket Force is relatively young. It was officially inaugurated at the end of 2015. Coming up are Major General Zhao Tioling and the Dongfeng 26 strategic ballistic missiles. They can carry either conventional or nuclear warheads. The missiles can be fired on short notice and strike both land and sea based targets with precision.
And here is the formation of conventional missiles led by Major General Lan Jiyin. The Dongfeng 21D medium range missiles can recognize terrain and correct courses during their flight. The type is specially developed to target vessels. It is sometimes called the carrier killer. Next up, the enhanced Dongfeng-16 missiles, led by Major General Zhang Mingguo. They can destroy infrastructure projects, such as ports and airfields. last, and perhaps the most important, the nuclear missile formation led by Major General Pan Jihui. We're now looking at two types of solid fuel intercontinental ballistic missiles. They are strong embodiments of China's defense capabilities and serve as the ultimate deterrent. Parade is coming to an end with the nuclear missile formation. Nine battle groups have been reviewed at the Zhuhe training base. They're from the five branches of the PLA, including the Army, Navy, Air Force, Rocket Force, and the Strategic Support Force. The parade involves 12,000 personnel altogether. Now all troops are moving to join the weapons and equipment in the rally area in front of the viewing stand. When everybody is assembled. President Xi Jinping will address the troops. To conduct drills with vigilance and speed is the mantra of the armed forces joining today's parade. And they did it. In a matter of days, the personnel and equipment deployment had been finished in time. Their performance in discipline Adaptability and solidarity has been tested. Today is also a day of inspection of the service personnel. It has always been a ritual of the Chinese for many centuries. For the Chinese people, a ritual of the military is of paramount importance. It sends a signal, a signal of solidarity, stability, and clarity to both friends and foes at home and abroad. The Chinese are no strangers to warfare or conflicts. Actually, China's history of five millennia is full of warfares, but the Chinese have also developed their own philosophy of war. As Sun Tzu said 2,000 years ago, the supreme art of war is to subdue the enemy without fighting. And only a force with strength can make that happen. And that is what the PLA has been doing.
to shape an armed force of conviction, loyalty, and capabilities. The ability to win wars on the battlefield will enable them to win peace in a conflicted world. Now the servicemen are lining up to be reviewed and listen to the address of President Xi. Very soon, Xi Jinping, the Commander in Chief, will address the soldiers, officers, and the entire country on the occasion of the 90th anniversary of the PLA's founding. Now, General Secretary of the CPC Central Committee, Chinese President, Chairman of the Central Military Commission, Xi Jinping, give an important address. Comrades, today we're holding our grand military parade at the training base in celebration of the 90th anniversary of the founding of the Chinese People's Liberation Army. Nine decades ago, a gunshot heard from the city of Nanchang pronounced the birth of a new model of the People's Army led by the Communist Party of China. In the past nine decades, the PLA has held high the banner of the party while rooted firmly on the ground of the nation and carrying the aspirations of the Chinese people. They have fought bravely and shed blood, marched forward, triumphed over all enemies, tackled all difficulties in order to advance the dignity, prosperity, and strength of the Chinese people. History has provided ample proof that the PLA is a gallant military force loyal to the party. And loyal to the country. It is a military force that strives for the cause of the great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation. Our party takes great pride in having such a gallant military force. And all countrymen, women of all ethnicities in China take great pride in having such a gallant military force. Comrades, being able to enjoy peace is a blessing for the people. And it is the responsibility of the PLA to protect it. The world is not entirely a peaceful one. 
and peace needs to be safeguarded. Today, we're closer than any other period in history to the goal of the great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation. And we need more than any period in history to build a strong military. We must fully implement the strong military philosophy as set forth by the party, walk unswervingly on the path of building with Chinese characteristics a strong military, and strive towards the party's strong military goal under the backdrop of new realities, and build our gallant military force into a world-class one. All comrades, Commanders and soldiers of the PLA, you should unswervingly follow the absolute leadership of the Communist Party of China, listen to the directions set by the party, and follow its command wherever the party points, and you shall go to battle. All commanders and soldiers of the PLA, you should always follow the basic principle of serving the people wholeheartedly, forever standing with the people, keeping the people in your minds and hearts, and be an army of the people and for the people. All commanders and soldiers of the PLA, you should see your capacity for combat as the sole standard for self-measurement. Focus on combat readiness and build yourself into an elite force that is ready for action and victory at all times. All commanders and soldiers of the PLA, you should carry out unswervingly the building of a solid political foundation of the military, military reforms, technological development, and law-based administration in order to comprehensively modernize our national defense and military. I firmly believe that our gallant military has both the confidence and the ability to defeat all intruders, that our military has the confidence and ability to safeguard our national sovereignty, security, and development interests, that our military has the confidence and ability to write a new chapter in the building of a strong military and make new and greater contributions towards the realization of the two sanitary goals, the China dream of the great rejuvenation of the Chinese nation and the safeguarding of world peace. Comrades, General Secretary Xi Jinping just gave a very important address in which he reviewed the great history and accomplishments of the PLA in the past nine decades. He also called for the building of a strong military in a new era of new realities. The entire PLA must keep in mind and follow the calling set forth in the address. And the PLA must keep firmly in mind people's expectations of you, your responsibilities to the Chinese nation. You must never forget your roots and continue to march forward in order to write a new and glorious chapter a fresh chapter of a strong military. The PLA will strive towards building 
a disciplined military force that is loyal to the command of the party and can win battles. Now the military parade marking the 90th anniversary of the founding of the PLA is concluded.